the purple pride of Minnesota, on the verge of going where no Vikings team has gone in over 20 years. Led by the amazing Randall Cunningham, having the best season of his career at the age of 35. And rookie sensation Randy Moss, arguably the best receiver in the NFL. To get there, they'll have to beat the Atlanta Falcons, a team having its best year ever. News 6 takes you for a ride on the road to the Super Bowl. Now, here's Tom Hansen. Good evening, I'm Tom Hansen. Thanks for joining us for this News 6 special, The Road to the Super Bowl. By this time tomorrow, the Minnesota Vikings will either be making plans for the Super Bowl or heading to their homes in shock. And millions of Purple fans are confident it will be Super Bowl number 5. In fact, I've already got my plane tickets. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to take you back over this phenomenal season. We'll relive the glories of the Vikings' best teams back in the 70s and talk to some Northlanders who played then. We'll hear from Coach Dennis Green about the Atlanta Falcons and some brave Northlanders will give us their pregame predictions. The Vikings came out of last week's game against Arizona more confident than I've ever seen this team. This team's offense was able to execute almost at will. It was obvious Coach Green liked what he saw, not only against the Cardinals, but all season long. Remember, many of the so-called experts picked the Vikings to finish middle of the pack in the NFC Central. We don't really worry about what outside expectations are. Our whole focus is inside. We saw ourselves the exact same way July 29th in training camp. Uh, most people had us picked, uh, the Central Division picked as uh, Green Bay, Tampa, and most people had Detroit and then us and then Chicago. We didn't see ourselves that way. So therefore, just because all of a sudden we have uh, the ability to play well at home or we win, we don't all of a sudden now start thinking that, that what other people say about us means more than what we say about ourselves. Not a chance. Second down. But the Atlanta Falcons are a much tougher team than the Arizona Cardinals, and the Vikings have only had a week to prepare this time. We'll hear more from head coach Dennis Green and go over his plan of attack later in this program. There weren't many people predicting the Vikings would go 15-1 this season. In fact, few were predicting anything but chaos. John Schottenbauer takes us back to last spring to look at the team that almost wasn't. John? Thanks, Tom. Can you believe that this is the same team that eight months ago was this close to losing Coach Denny Green and even closer to leaving? Nobody I talked to last summer was predicting the Minnesota Vikings were Super Bowl contenders, but then in stepped Red McCombs, and the rest, as they say, is history. Billy Joe Red McCombs' purchase of the Minnesota Vikings last July was not a cinch for the billionaire from Spur, Texas. After the Vikings ownership group decided to put the team up for sale, their first choice for a new owner was author Tom Clancy. The NFL turned down Clancy's offer, however, after finding his financial proposal to buy the team was suspicious. Meanwhile, in the mix was team president and part owner Roger Hedrick. Hedrick had the money, but was not considered by the rest of the group to be the best man to buy the team. In comes the big man from Texas. Red McCombs outbid several others, including Minnesota Timberwolves owner Glenn Taylor with his $250 million offer. The Vikings accepted, and the NFL approved the deal on July 28th. The man who made his billions in communications and Ford cars was now the sole owner of the Minnesota Vikings, marking the first time in franchise history that the team had one man running the operation, appeasing the NFL's wishes to have the Vikings run by one owner. McCombs was accepted with some hesitation from the Vikings fans as the former owner of the NBA's Denver Nuggets and the San Antonio Spurs was interested in getting an NFL franchise in South Texas. The question remained, was Red going to move the team? I think San Antonio, Austin, South Texas is entitled to an NFL team. I think the fan base here has proved that. But I have no intentions of uh, any thought of moving this team. After Red took over the reins as the Vikings' new owner, the next question was, what would happen to the team on the field? Red named business partner Gary Woods the Vikings' new team president and said he would make his decisions on the rest of the staff after further evaluation. The focus of that evaluation would be on head coach Dennis Green. Red then immersed himself in the team. He stayed in a dorm at the Vikings' training camp in Mankato to get close to the Vikings and attended every preseason game. After the team went undefeated in the preseason, McCombs saw how much the players responded to head coach Dennis Green and offered him a three-year contract extension. Since signing Green, assuring the fans the Vikings will stay in Minnesota and attending every game except the Vikings' 27-24 loss to Tampa Bay, Billy Joe Red McCombs has done everything right in his first year as the new owner of the Minnesota Vikings.
At the beginning of the season, McCombs said he thought the Vikings could win every game. Up to this point, he's 20-1, including the preseason and the playoffs. Tom. Thanks, John. Still to come on the road to the Super Bowl, we're going to tell you about some special Northland ties to this Vikings team. We'll tell you how you can meet your favorite Vikings face-to-face -face in a special Iron Range visit. But first, we'll visit one of the Purple People leaders and recall some of the glory years of the 1970s. The road to the Super Bowl continues with Tom Hansen. It's hard to talk about the dominance of this year's Vikings without thinking about the team's dynasties of the 70s. John tracked down rare film footage from those days and has a story to warm the hearts of Vikings fans who remember. I was just a kid, but I remember clearly the way Minnesota fans felt in those days. It was just a given that the Vikings were headed for the Super Bowl then. Anything less was a disappointment. Forty men had played a team sport about as well as it can be played. And that is how the Minnesota Vikings became champions of the National Football Conference. It was the most frightening sight in the league for over ten years. Page, Eller, Marshall, Larson, Sutherland, the Purple People Eaters. A seemingly unstoppable defensive attack. Pioneers in speed and stunting guaranteed to destroy offensive linemen and crush quarterbacks. Again, it was up to the defense, and the Purple Gang never looked better. Opposing teams had always dreaded late-season games at Soldier Field or Lambeau, but nothing compared to December at Old Met Stadium in the 70s. From 1968 to 1978, the Vikings played in six conference championships, three of them in severe cold. They won four conference titles, going to four Super Bowls. For 10 years, Minnesota fans just expected their team to get to the playoffs and win. Former Vikings defensive tackle Doug Sutherland remembers. It, it was kind of just an exciting time to be with in Minnesota, just as it's uh, exciting to be in Minnesota right now. The great teams they've got now, uh, you know, Alan Page, Carl Owen, and Jim Marshall are three of the you know the best defensive linemen to play, in, you know, in the National Football League. So just being a part of it was, uh, uh, you know, anything that any defensive lineman could ask for. There was more to the Vikings than defense. Hall of Famer Fran Tarkington quarterbacked many of the winning years, known for his wild scrambles and fluttering passes. Blood and guts running backs like Bill Brown, Dave Osborne, and Chuck Foreman churned out tough yards in snow and mud. And through it all, Coach Bud Grant stood tall on the sidelines, his face never betraying emotion leading the Vikings to the postseason 10 of 11 seasons from 1967 to 1978. Gives you tingles. There are plenty of well-known Northland connections to the Minnesota Vikings like Doug Sutherland and former coach Bud Grant, but there are a few more who will actually be on the field tomorrow you might not be aware of. Ragnar, the Vikings' bearded mascot, is actually Joe Juranich, a, a native of Vili. He looks a lot like people you see walking down Sheridan Street this time of year. Steve Craig said a former UMD football player will be holding down the marker for tomorrow's game at the Dome. Brent Griffith, also a former UMD player, works as a Viking security guard. And Bulldogs hockey player Kent Sauer's brother Craig is a linebacker for the Atlanta Falcons. Tom. John, of course, will be a lot of local fans there as well. Viking fans of old will remember the great tailgating parties outside of Metropolitan Stadium. I worked security at the Old Met and remember those days all too well, especially the final game there. Our Jody Grayson was at last weekend's Dome playoff game and found out that the hottest place to be was also the coldest. Whether it's 30 degrees above or 30 degrees below, the weather won't stop these crazy Vikings fans from having a good tailgate party. Super Bowl, color it purple. Oh yeah! Every chance you can get to tailgate, I mean, why not? I mean, you might as well. You come up and bring a grill. You, it's cheap. I mean, really, it's cheap. You know, you, twenty bucks. You got burgers, brats, you know, beer, whatever. You go to the dome. And yeah. You spend hundred bucks for burger, beer, brats. Some pre-game activities include a game of touch football, a ceremony of praise, 
and a dive into the moss pit. Three, two, one, if you're a Viking fan, down here in Minneapolis is the place to be. Hundreds of cars are lined up. Thousands of diehard Viking fans are braving this winter weather, putting on layers of clothes just to see their team head to the Super Bowl. Are you cold? No, I'm not cold. I'm not cold. Are you cold? No, I'm not, I'm not at all. Cold. I'm not cold. I love it. We're not cold. My hands are freezing right now, yes. It, it's, it's very cold out here right now. And even though the temperatures dropped to at least 12 below, the sun still managed to shine on these Vikings fans. Well, I got to work on my tan for Miami. That's why I'm doing this. I'm working on my, I don't want to get burnt. From the Metrodome, Jody Grayson, News 6. Tailgaters started arriving outside the Metrodome at 9 in the morning and stayed until late into the night. We expect the same all over again tomorrow. Still to come, we'll have a detailed look at the Atlanta Falcons from head coach Denny Green. But first, we'll meet a Viking season ticket holder who's living in the middle of Packer territory in Lake Nebagaman, Wisconsin to be exact, who says he's not afraid to wear purple year-round in Packer country. The road to the Super Bowl continues with John Schottenbauer. Welcome back. There's no doubt that Vikings fever is sweeping Minnesota right now as the team continues to speed on down the road to the Super Bowl. Over in Wisconsin, though, football fans are a lot less excited. There are a few Viking fans hiding out in Packer land, however, and Dave Anderson caught up with one. I'm hoping he comes back for another year because he's playing great. When it comes to fan loyalty, Green Bay Packers fans are hard to beat. To a non-Wisconsinite, it almost seems as if the entire state backs the pack, from the smallest infant to the oldest old-timer. In reality, that's not the case. If you take time to ask around, you can actually find a couple of rogue Vikings fans, something diehards with green and gold in their blood can't stand. I think they should get out of Wisconsin. Minnesota. <laughs> they should be in Minnesota where they belong. One of those Wisconsin-born Vikings fans can be found at Northwestern Middle School in Poplar. Jesse Peterson coaches a girls' basketball team, and for some reason unknown to his young charges, he's an immense Minnesota fan. I've been a Vikes fan forever, I think. Uh, as long as I can remember. Me and my buddy Chad, we used to run around outside Sammy White and Ahmad Rashad, for crying out loud. I don't know. Of course, being a Purple People Eater supporter in Wisconsin has earned Jesse a lot of flack. Pretty much all my buddies are Packer fans, so it's, uh, it gets a little tough sometimes. Even the sixth grade girls he coaches make it tough for him. Their target? The Viking hat he wears while coaching. Just to, before practice, we were teasing about how he should be um, afraid to wear a Viking's hat. People always try to take his hat and stuff. Oh, well, they do, huh? Yeah. Does anybody ever succeed and steal it? Sometimes, not really, though. He's too tall. Thank goodness for height. Despite the tricks his team has planned against him, it looks like Jesse will have the last laugh. As a Viking season ticket holder, he'll be spending Sunday at the Metrodome as the Vikes take on Atlanta. And if the team gives him too much flack when he gets back, he can always make them run laps. In Poplar, Dave Anderson, News 6 Sports. Thanks, Dave. By the way, driving Highway 13 from Superior to Ashland, we saw no fewer than 10 homes decorated with Minnesota Vikings flags and banners, and that was back when the Packers were still in the playoff hunt. It's hard to say if the small settlement of Viking cheeseheads has grown now that the Pack has hung up their cleats. Tom. John, speaking of the Packers, one man who had a great game against the Packers will not be playing the NFC Championship game Sunday. Wide receiver Jake Reed will miss action against the Falcons with a hamstring injury that has plagued him since late November. Reed saw little action with no receptions against the Cardinals last week. That means second-year receiver Matthew Hatchett will get significant playing time. When we return, more with Vikings head coach Dennis Green. Here's some things you might not know about the Vikings head coach. He is the longest tenured coach in the NFL right now. This is seventh year. He was an all-state running back in high school and played briefly with British Columbia in the CFL in 1991. His take on the Atlanta Falcons when we come back.
The road to the Super Bowl continues with Tom Hansen. Welcome back. Of course, Dennis Green played in the CFL in 1971 and not 1991. Vikings head coach Dennis Green has more than a trip to the Super Bowl on the line Sunday. He stands to earn another $700,000 in incentives if the Vikings go all the way to the Super Bowl. Green signed a contract extension in September that pays him about $1.5 million this year. Our coverage of the game starts at 10.30 with the pregame kickoff set for 11.30. Running game, uh, throw the ball well, a complete team. I think anytime you go out and you go 14-2 and two in the regular season, then you have the ability to have a complete ball club. Uh, they have the advantage of playing in a dome. Uh, clearly the crowd will be in our favor, the noise will be in our favor. Hopefully it will be the same type of atmosphere that they've had at their home but that they will have a difficult time dealing with it as has the other opponents that we've played. They have the total package, passing game, a veteran quarterback, a strong running game. Uh, they combine that with outstanding leadership uh, and newcomer Eugene Robinson at safety and then a guy that's been around you know, a long time, uh, Jesse Tuggle, Lester Archibald. I mean, so they're, they're a good solid team along with special teams. This is gonna be a close, Hard fought game that's going to go for 60 minutes, and uh, we're going to have to show what we've always shown the ability to play 60 minutes plus football and fight to the end and try to come out on top. For the first time in NFL history, a dome team will be in the Super Bowl with the 41 21 win. Minnesota will now play the Atlanta Falcons here at the Metrodome. The winner heads to Miami. I guarantee they would like to be playing at home. They would like us to travel to Atlanta and be playing in their dome. But it's that's why you play all year. You play for the home field advantage, and we have it, and we want to take advantage of it. If we, if we advanced into the Super Bowl, we'd be playing two teams, or we'd be playing one of two teams that we hadn't played all year. But there's no question this is the best team we have faced, and I think a team that matches up as well with us as any team in the league would. Uh, they have a ball control offense, uh, a very strong run defense. One of Green's not-so-secret weapons is the Metrodome, unquestionably the loudest stadium in the NFL. I've stood on the sidelines plenty of times, and I can tell you earplugs are required equipment. A lot of questions have been asked this season about the Vikings' use of sound at the Dome, but Jody Grayson says the team and fans aren't backing off. From the screaming fans to the blaring music, Playing in the Metrodome gives the Vikings more than just home field advantage. Coaches have complained and players have struggled, but the howling, towel-waving, purple-clad crowd is all just part of the game. I believe the people of Minnesota deserve a championship, and that's what we're trying to bring them. And um, they're into the ball game, tremendous crowd support. I mean, we have the advantage. It's hard to run your offense when you have that many people yelling and involved in the game. They call it dome field advantage. Nine teams tried to beat the noise this season, and all nine teams failed. Last week, the Cardinals tried to deal with it, but Jake Plummer's two interceptions and a fumble proved that there's no place like dome. The fans were just great today. A couple of fumbles, really, when they recovered, when we recovered. But I mean, it, it was, uh, that's, there's nothing that helps you more than a loud crowd like that in a big game. Whether it's fair or not, the Falcons and Vikings territory will have to contend with this as well as this. Jody Grayson, News 6. Thanks, Jody. The Vikings have already been warned about, warned about excessive noise at next Sunday's NFC Championship game against Atlanta. A spokesperson for the Vikings said they aren't going to do anything different from what they've done all season. Tom. Still to come, we'll tell you how you can meet Vikings in person without traveling to the Dome, and we'll also hear game predictions from brave Northlanders. But first, some Dome history for you. The very first Dome playoff game was against Atlanta and the Vikings back in 1983. The Vikings, under the guidance of Bud Grant, won 30-24. They lost in the next round to the eventual Super Bowl champion, Washington Redskins. Nine Minnesota Vikings will travel to Hawaii for Pro Bowl right after the Super Bowl in February. When they get back, their first stop will be here in the Northland, giving Northland fans a chance to get autographs and meet their favorite purple stars. The fourth annual Arctic Blast Snowmobile Rally begins Friday, February 12th with a tailgate party in Cook. From there, a snowmobile ride is scheduled to Tower, where you can meet the Vikings for autographs, watch a Vikings parade, and join Vikings in a special dance. There's a second ride on Saturday the 13th and a pancake breakfast the final day in Tower. You can ride with the Vikings and help raise money for the Vikings Children's Fund, or you can just come by and say hi. 
The Vikings are considered 11-point favorites tomorrow by professional odds makers, but we wondered what average Northlanders would predict. Here's a sampling of Viking support in Duluth. Uh, I'll say 21-17 uh, Vikes. A good close battle. I think it'll be a close one, yeah. All right. What do you think the score is going to be? 41-21. All right. Vikes. Well, I think it's going to be 101. 100 to 1? All right, that's a good game, I think. Oh, we're going to stomp them. 41 to 7. Uh, what do you think the uh, Vikings uh, Falcons game is going to turn out like this weekend? He's not saying. I think the score will be about 34 to 21. Vikings are going to beat the Falcons about 52 to 20. Maybe 1 million to 1. <laughs> Who's going to win this weekend? Well, here's my prediction. I give the Vikings 38 and the Falcons 24, moving Minnesota on to Super Bowl 33 in Miami. How about you, Tom? 34-24 in favor of the Vikings. Thanks for joining us on Road to the Super Bowl. And, of course, we'll have the game right here on News 6. Thanks again.